Perfect. Well, Renee, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, and thank you all for letting me join you this evening to talk a little bit more about the local author pub self publishing resources that are available through the Fairfax County Public Library. Um, like Renee mentioned, my name is Emily and I'm with Biblioboard, which is the team kind of behind these resources. Um, and just like she said today, we'll be kind of a, an introductory look at these different tools and resources. Um, and we have two other sessions um, further down the line that will go into a lot more detail um, and kind of specifics of using each of the different tools and resources. So today will be a nice overview and kind of walk through um, of, kind of what these tools are, the different capabilities, and of course, how to be able to access them. Um, so everyone should be able to see my screen here at the moment. If anyone's having any trouble seeing that, definitely let me know. Um, and so that that is front and center on your computers. I'm gonna I am gonna turn my video off for now, um, but I'll be able to toss it back on whenever we have any um, questions um, or any anything you might be able to like me to go into a bit more detail on. So overall, these kind of self publishing or indie publishing resources that we'll be talking about here tonight um, that Biblioboard kind of provides are designed to help local and independent authors be able to create, share, and even discover local and independently published works. Um, so that's kind of how we'll walk through things here today in that context of being able to create, share, and discover. Um, so in that kind of fashion, the first tool or resource that I wanted to mention here is called the Pressbooks Public Tool, which allows you to create uh, professional quality book files all through the library subscription. So at, at no cost to you, um, and it's totally unlimited. So you can make as many different books in as many different file formats and editions as you might like. And these professional quality book files that you're able to create um, are both, you can make both ebook files as well as print ready files. Um, so, print ready PDF that you could send off to a local press, print on demand distributor, what have you. Um, and the nice thing about this Pressbooks public tool um, is that it's really accessible in the sense that it doesn't require any advanced tech or design knowledge um, whatsoever. Um, also accessible in the sense that it's open to authors and writers of any genres and open to authors and writers kind of nowhere, no matter where you're at um, in the writing process. Um, so whether you're maybe participating in National Novel Writing Month for the first time and are just starting to put words down, um, or if you are a seasoned author with multiple completed manuscripts or anywhere in between, um, there are different really easy ways to get your work into Pressbooks and get it formatted, designed, um, and looking exactly how you'd like and ready to export. Um, and again, this is all through the library's subscription, um, so it's at no cost to, to you all as users. And again, it's completely unlimited. So there are no watermarks, um, no kind of limits or anything there. So if you're anything like me, maybe you go to export your first ebook file and then notice that there's a glaring typo on the second page. Um, it's no problem at all. You can just pop back in to your account, make any changes as needed, and then be able to re-export your file pretty much right away. Um, so you have kind of total control from the very beginning of actually the hard part of actually writing the work all the way through to formatting, designing by selecting from these pre made design templates or themes, um, all the way through the actual exporting of the files. And then from there, you have again, total ownership of these files. Um, so you can proceed to sell, market, distribute them however you might like. Um, it's totally up to you. And to get started with Pressbooks, it's a pretty kind of simple process. Um, you are required to set up a Pressbooks public account, which I'll 
show you how to do in just a moment here. Um, but essentially creating a book within Pressbooks, you set up your account, create your first book, you can end up creating as many books as you'd like in your account. Um, create your book by just providing a title, author name, description, and then you start adding your content, whether it's just writing your work directly into your Pressbooks account, or you can copy and paste from an external document, or even import an entire existing document, a Word document, open office document, what have you. Um, you can even import your entire existing manuscript straight on in there. And then you get to design it however you'd like by selecting from various pre-made design templates. And from there, you can just go ahead and export the file format of your choosing, whether it's an ebook file or a print ready PDF file. And then from there, you can continuously return to your account to create additional works, edit and update your existing works and so forth as often as you might like. And to find Pressbooks or to get started, uh, I know Fairfax is in the midst of adding um, these resources to the library's website. Um, and I believe in our chat box there, um, Renee shared the link to the new Writer's Corner section on the Fairfax County Library website. Um, there in the Create section, you'll find the link to Pressbooks Public, um, where you can go ahead and get started. They've also included a few tutorials and user guides there to help you along the way. Or you can also always find Pressbooks on Biblioboard Library as well. Um, so if you go to library.biblioboard.com or visit the Biblioboard Library app, from there, you'll see in the menu, there's a for authors section. I'll zoom in a little bit here. And that create your book option will take you right on over to the Fairfax County Public Library Pressbooks instance. Oh, and great, Brenna. Actually, Renee just shared that link to the Writer's Corner again in there. So you have easy access to all of these. Um, and I see that there was a question here um, asking how easy does Pressbooks make it to go back and make changes to a book that you've already published? Um, and it's a great question. So you can just log back in to your account update any, anything you might like, whether it's a typo that you're correcting or if you're maybe changing your cover image or adding additional chapters, front matter, back matter. Um, you can go in, make any changes that you'd like and then just re-export your file with the latest version. Um, and from there, if you have an old version for sale somewhere, you'll just wanna send over the newest file um, to whatever distributor you might be using. Does that help answer your question there? If there, if there are any follow-ups or anything, definitely feel free to put them in the chat box there. Okay, perfect. In our next session, we'll go much more in-depth on press books in terms of we'll walk through actually the entire process from start to finish of creating a book in press books, getting all of your content in there. Um, getting all organized, designed, and actually exporting the book files. Um, but for now, I did just want to point out kind of how to access the tool once you find yourself on the Pressbooks public kind of landing page, as we're seeing here. You just go ahead and connect through the library. Um, and like I mentioned, you are required to create an account. Um, that's just so you can have all of your work in your own kind of private instance there. And to do so, you just go ahead and set up a profile. Um, you'll be prompted to provide, to provide a username, a password, um, and an email address. Uh, but that's just for password recovery. That's not shared with anyone else. And I'm just gonna log into the Fairfax staff account here, just so you can kind of see what the interface looks like. Um, in this account, I've already 
created a book. So I'll be taken right on in to the last book that I've worked on here. Oops. Hide our news here. <laughs> However, if I was logging in for the first time, I would be prompted to create my very first book. And with that, the first thing you're prompted to do is to create your, to name your web book address, which I realize sounds like kind of a foreign term. Um, that's just the URL that you'll be working off of for that specific book in your account, um, since Pressbooks is a web-based tool. Um, but you can keep that fully private, so it's just visible for your eyes only. And then your actual book title itself. It could even just be a placeholder since you can change that later on. And with that, we'll be brought right on in back to that dashboard that we were kind of just looking at a moment ago, where we can then <clears throat> get started on the new book that we just created um, in terms of getting our content in there, whether it's writing directly into your Pressbooks account or copying and pasting from an external document, or again, even importing an entire manuscript file as well. So totally up to you, just depending on where you're at in the process. Like we saw in that slide previously, and like I kind of touched upon a little bit, um, one of the kind of what I would say probably the most important or valuable feature here with Pressbooks are these pre-made design templates or themes that you're able to select from and apply to your manuscript with just one click of a button that will effectively design your entire work. Um, and that's what can really transform what might otherwise look like a uh, Word document that's just been saved as a PDF. This is what can transform that into looking like a professional quality book that can stand alongside a traditionally published work um, without looking homemade in any way. And you can just browse through these themes, get a little glimpse into the different details, maybe what genres they're recommended for or any design quirks to be aware of. Or if you happen to know, say, I know I'm writing a romance novel, you can do a quick search and Pressbooks will provide some suggestions for you as well if you'd prefer. And once you have all of your text in here, um, you've select, applied the theme that you'd like, it's just a matter of filling out your details for your book, updating your title if you'd like, adding any additional contributors, um, adding your book cover image, if you already have one. If not, there is also a cover generator tool built right on into Pressbooks, which you can use instead if you don't have a cover quite yet. And once you've filled out the additional kind of details for your work, you're actually ready to go ahead and actually export your book in the file format or formats of your choosing. Um, the most popular ones being a print ready PDF that's formatted to the exact specifications and requirements that print on demand distributors um, require these files to be in, <coughs> as well as a digital PDF and an EPUB file, which is kind of the universal ebook format. And you just select the formats that you'd like press export, and those files will be generated right here in the center of your dashboard for you to, again, be able to download, sell, market, distribute, however you might like. Once again, you have total ownership of these works. Even though you are using the service through the library, that's something I definitely want to kind of drive home there. You still um, have total ownership of any content that you place into Pressbooks, any and all book files that you export as well. And then from there, you can just come back into your account as often as you'd like to revisit 
previous works, create additional ones. Um, again, on a totally unlimited basis there. Emily, that's gonna be oh, there's a question in chat about um, indie author project or press books rejecting certain books or publications. And Amanda gave the example of how some books are removed from Amazon that are considered pornography. That's a great question. So Pressbooks does not reject any content um, since you can, essentially this is your own kind of private workspace here. Um, the Indie Author Project on the other hand, if someone submits an ebook to the Indie Author Project, which for those who aren't familiar, we'll go into more detail on the Indie Author Project in just a moment here. Um, but to answer your question, Amanda, if someone submits to the Indie Author Project, before that submission is added to any collection, before it goes live, it does go through um, kind of a pretty basic, but initial kind of quality control or vetting process. Um, and with that, we're primarily just making sure that the submission is technically sound, um, that the pages aren't upside down, there are no broken links, things of that nature. And then also making sure that it's an, an intentional literary submission. We've had some people accidentally grab the wrong files off their computer before. So ruling out both of those kind of more obvious factors. Um, the last component to that initial vetting process um, is content based. So we are double checking on a very high level um, that the submission is appropriate for a public library setting. Um, and with that, we're not trying to impose too much censorship or <clears throat> limit anyone's creativity. It's really just ensuring that there are no graphic images on the cover and no hate speech within the actual work itself. Um, and it's very, very infrequent that anything is kind of flagged or blocked on that last factor. Um, but if, if anything does come up, we reach out to the author directly and kind of explain what's occurred there. And then on the other end, on the more exclusive curated side of the Indie Author Project, um, that's when our curation partners are really diving into the quality of the work to see that they make um, the kind of best of the best collections. Um, but if anyone has any follow-up questions on, on, on that regard, definitely uh, please share them. I'm happy to go into more detail if you'd like. Um, but before we kind of continue on to the share side of things with the Indie Author Project, um, do you have any questions at all about press books can appear at the moment. I know it's a, kind of a high level introduction there and our next session will go into much greater detail of walking through the whole process. Uh, but for the time being, do we have any questions at all at the moment? Okay. I'm not seeing any come through here, but if any anything does come up, we can always kind of backtrack and return to answer those. Um, but otherwise, in the meantime, moving on to the kind of share side of things in terms of how you can make your ebooks available at participating libraries throughout the state and potentially at participating libraries all across the US and Canada, we have the Indie Author Project, which I know we can briefly mention here a moment ago. Um, but the Indie Author Project is a year-round discovery program um, that helps try to connect local and independent authors with public libraries and readers. Um, and the Indie Author Project is completely non-exclusive, so it does not kind of impede you from continuing to pursue other avenues of selling, marketing, distributing your work. It's just a nice kind of additional avenue um, to reach new readers and kind of gain more exposure through the library sphere. Um, and it's incredibly easy to submit to the Indie Author Project. Um, it just takes a couple minutes. And by submitting, um, again, you still maintain total ownership of your work and you can request to have it removed from the program at any time. 
And like I mentioned, there's kind of two different parts of the Indie Author Project. Um, on one side, on the more kind of inclusive side, um, by submitting, as long as your ebook passes that initial kind of quality control vet that we just talked about, it's added to our local ebook collection available to participating libraries all across Virginia, including, of course, Fairfax County. Um, and this collection is called Indie Virginia, and it's a collection of ebooks on the Biblioboard Library platform. All locally, local ebooks by local Virginia indie authors. Um, so kind of like a statewide independent author archive of sorts. So pretty much right off the bat, you have that almost instant um, increase in exposure and potential new readership just by being included in that local collection. But then on the more kind of exclusive or competitive side of the program, um, we also wanted to make sure that the books that were being submitted to the Indie Author Project, we wanted to make sure that those that were coming through that were really high quality, really great indie reads, we wanted to make sure that they were getting um, kind of some more attention, a little more spotlight like they deserve. And of course, making sure that libraries felt comfortable promoting these independently published works, um, knowing that kind of the best of the best of these submissions have been identified. So with that, we partner with different curation partners, including um, Publishers Weekly, uh, Library Journal, and they kind of in turn go through these submissions from authors all across the US and Canada. And they're trying to identify the best of the best out of all the submissions coming through to the program. And those that are chosen as being really high quality indie reads, in addition to being available locally in the author's statewide collection, um, these top submissions are labeled as what we call Indie Author Project Select. And those are available not just to participating libraries locally, but to participating libraries all across the US and Canada. Um, and that includes multiple states where the entire state has access to these collections. Um, and it's a pretty competitive process. I think right now we're at about 10% of submissions are chosen as Indie Author Project Select. Um, so it's kind of a nice honor or validation to have one of these reputable curation sources or review sources give your book that seal of approval. Um, in addition to, of course, the wider audience that you now have access to um, through these kind of curated library collections. And a really big development with the Indie Author Project in the past couple years has been actually the addition of the royalty, the author royalties component, um, which initially when we first kind of came up with the Indie Author Project, it was really designed as pretty much a discovery program, um, not so much meant to be a revenue generator, um, more is just a way to reach new readers. But as the program continued to grow, um, I think it was about two years ago, we introduced this royalty paying component where for those authors who do have their book chosen as Indie Author Project Select, they're invited to opt in to the royalty pool where they'll start to receive royalties based on the sale of these collections to libraries, um, as well as the usage of their title in the collection. So kind of a twofold uh, formula there for how those royalties um, are calculated. Um, and still totally non-exclusive, just a nice way to be able to, again, turn what used to be just a discovery program into an actual revenue generator for these authors. Um, so definitely, a very exciting kind of development going on with the Indie Author Project um, relatively recently. Um, another development we've had um, back at the beginning of pan the pandemic, we launched what, we, what we're calling our Indie Author Project Expert Sessions. And this is a free 
monthly webinar series where each month we have a different either award-winning indie author or industry expert presenting on a different topic um, on either the business or the craft of being an indie author. Um, and again, these are free and open to the public. Um, we do pay presenters, but there's no cost to attend. Um, and we also make the recordings of these events available to the public as well on our little expert sessions archive page like we're seeing here. Um, and I definitely recommend checking some of these out. Um, we've had a really wide variety of different subjects covered. Um, our most recent one last month was how 2020 changed book marketing for good. Um, and we had this kind of industry expert talking about all the um, different ways to get the most out of virtual author events, um, new kind of media channels and platforms, the rise in audiobooks, things like that. Um, and then we, on the flip side, have had ones that are much more focused on kind of the craft of being a writer. Um, this freeing your muse, overcoming writer's block session we had with a psychologist and author a few months ago. Um, so definitely a great resource to be sure to check out. Um, and I see here that Stephen has, has a question, how does participating in the Indie Author Project compare to donating paperback books to the library? <coughs> Um, and I can definitely, Renee, feel free to chime in on this one also from the Fairfax perspective. Um, but for the Indie Author Project kind of in general, I know a lot of libraries don't accept donated paperback books from self-published authors or kind of authors in general. Um, and the big thing with the Indie Author Project is that these, since these books are presented as collections, um, a librarian in California doesn't necessarily need to know the names of the indie authors that are participating or the title. She doesn't need to know to be searching for them since they're seeing it as this presented kind of curated package. They are, there's already kind of a trust and confidence level there um, that can be really helpful, especially for indie authors who um, might not be quite as well known as others. Uh, this is a great way to still be able to get your books into these catalogs um, not just locally again, but participating libraries kind of all across the US and Canada. And also, of course, being able to, if you are chosen for the Indie Author Project select side of things, um, the crucial difference there would be being able to participate in the um, royalty pool versus donating a paperback that wouldn't quite, um, really wouldn't be as much of an option there. Renee, do you have, was there anything that, that you wanted to add to that about um, donating books to the library? I wanted to make sure I didn't misarticulate kind of how Fairfax handles that. No, you're absolutely, I just oh. want to address Amanda. Thank you for letting me know about the link. I'll make sure to go in and fix that. And also, you know, FCPL, we have a vetting process for donated books. So I, Emily is right. Your book may not be chosen to be added to our catalog. I look at the Indie Author Project as another way for exposure, another avenue for you to get your books in the hands of readers. So that's kind of how I view this opportunity. Definitely, and here you can even see on the, in Fairfax's Biblio board platform, um, you can see the very first thing that patrons or readers will find when they go to library.biblioboard.com or download the Biblioboard Library app, the first thing they'll see is this little selection of Fairfax County featured authors. Um, so right off the bat, kind of getting a little more focus and a little bit more emphasis there. Uh, and great question, Jerry. Jerry asked here if we could clarify um, that you have, a, you have a soft, your paperback book. Um, can you simply submit the book to the Indie Author Project in PDF format? Um, yes, you can. You can submit in either EPUB or PDF format. Um, I typically recommend if you do have the EPUB version to submit that. It just tends to be a more enjoyable reading experience for the patron. Um, however, we do accept PDFs and either way you can always create an 
e an EPUB file um, using the Pressbooks tool if, if you would like to. But to answer your question kind of more directly there, yes, you can definitely submit the PDF version of your book to the Indie Author Project. Um, and I did just share the link to the Fairfax submission page for the Indie Author Project. Um, as well as the link to the Indie Virginia collection on Biblia Award. Um, did that answer your question there, Jerry? Please let me know if I can uh, provide any more, any more details on that side of things. Yes, and with the Indie Author Project, um, beyond the year round, kind of discovery um, and curation component um, and the associated royalty pool. Um, like I said, we also have these monthly expert sessions that I definitely recommend taking a look at. Um, and very similarly, we also each year help facilitate um, the annual Indie Author Day event every November, um, which is kind of a day or this year, two days. And some libraries like Fairfax have a whole week of activities. Um, Indie Author Day is <clears throat> an event where at libraries and community organizations um, all across, again, the U.S. and Canada um, on this day each year come together for a day of programs, events, um, all kind of celebrating local and independent authors. Um, and Indie Author Day this year is we have our kickoff on November 12th on that Friday afternoon. And then on Saturday, we have a whole day of virtual author panels planned. Um, in addition to, of course, all of the local and a lot of time in-person events that are also happening um, at libraries um, all across the US and Canada. Um, and I know over on the Fairfax Library website, you can find out more about their own Indie Author Day events, um, I think right here on the homepage, you'll have a, a whole week of really kind of exciting events planned there. And I'll be sure to, I'm sure that Renee might mention something more about that before we hop off, but I'll just go ahead and toss that, um, that link in, in the chat box there as well. And one other kind of component to the Indie Author Project that I wanna be sure to mention, uh, in addition to the year round, discovery angle. Um, we also have our annual regional contests every spring, uh, where in, I think this past year, I think we had 15 participating regions, um, 13 US states and two Canadian provinces. Um, and these contests each year try to identify the best indie published book in that state or province. Um, so far, we've been just doing it in the genres of adult fiction and YA fiction, uh, but I think that'll definitely be expanding in the future. Um, and the winners receive monetary prize of $500 each, as well as a variety of different promotional and marketing opportunities as well. Um, there's no cost to submit, and the winners of this year's contest are actually going to be announced on Indie Author Day on November 12th. And then next year's contest will launch on April 1st. Um, and we'll of course be doing a big kind of publicity and promotional push for that um, before we start accepting submissions. So just definitely something I wanted to point out there, however. Oh, I'm seeing we have a couple more questions coming through. Um, so Stephen's question asking, how does participating in this project affect licensing through the usual distribution channels? Um, so again, the India participation in the Indie Author Project is completely non-exclusive. So as long as you have the rights to the work that you're submitting, um, you're able to participate as well as continue to distribute your book through other channels like Apple Books, Barnes and Noble, Bookshop. Um, the only time where that would be would kind of licensing um, would disrupt your participation would be if you end up in an exclusive agreement with another distributor. Um, for example, if someone's exclusive with Amazon KDP Select or Amazon KDP, um, oftentimes they'll ask for their book to be removed from the Indie Author Project 
And then they can always have it added back once they're no longer exclusive with KDP. Um, so it's just kind of a matter of being aware of your, of your other agreements um, and making sure that you don't have any exclusivity clauses over there. And Jerry, to go back to, to your earlier question, um, yes, yeah, so if you have a document version of your book, you can use the Pressbooks tool um, and import your entire document, make sure it's organized, have it designed however you'd like, and then you can actually export an EPUB file from there, correct. Um, you can't import a PDF into Pressbooks, unfortunately, um, but again, if you have a document version, you can import the document, um, or you can copy and paste, or if you're starting a brand new work, you can write your entire work into your Pressbooks account if you'd prefer. For the, does let me know if I can add any more detail to either of those kind of last questions or answers there. And I'll also be sure to sh share this link about Indie Author Day in the chat here in case anyone is interested in attending any of those virtual events, um, especially the announcement of the winners of this year's Virginia Author Project contest. Yeah, so overall, those are the kind of primary author resources that you have available through the library um, from the Biblio board team. And these, like I said, these Indie Author Project ebook collections, you can even start exploring right now on Biblio board library. Um, I think I shared the link already in there to the Indie Virginia collection. Um, and you'll also see if you look through the Fairfax County Libraries catalog. Um, you'll see there are even features, uh, featured kind of carousels of books by independent authors from the Indie Author Project, which is always really neat to see. But otherwise, like we talked about at the beginning, we do have two more sessions coming up. The next one will be really dedicated to Pressbooks Public and kind of walking through that whole process. Um, and the following one dedicated more to the indie author project side of things in terms of how to submit, how to get the most out of your participation. And oh, sorry, Steve, I just saw your other question there asking what genres are covered in indie author project select. That's a great question. So indie author project select does have um, kind of more of a focus on fiction. Um, with the exception being we also have expanded to memoirs. Um, currently, kind of true nonfiction um, in the sense of history books, educational, academic works, um, those are not eligible for consideration for Indie Author Project Select. Um, however, they can definitely be included in the local Indie Virginia collection. I'll pull up here again, as you can see. Um, here, so there's also poetry, nonfiction, in addition to memoirs and all of the fiction uh, categories that are included in Indie Author Project Select. But otherwise, do we have any questions at all here about um, Oh, here we go. Uh, does IAP provide metrics or analysis for work we might submit and have on IAP? Um, so that's a great question. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's one thing that we're really trying to focus on um, in the upcoming months is being able to finalize our kind of author facing um, dashboard where in the future you'll be able to go in and view usage for your book. Um, Royalties, if you are chosen as Indie Author Project Select. Currently, if an author reaches out and asks to see kind of how their book is doing in the program or what libraries it's available at, um, we can respond and provide them with that information. But right now, there's no way for you to go in and view it yourself, um, which is definitely one of our goals um, for the upcoming kind of months here. But for the time being, if you have a book in the Indie Author Project and you like to see kind of 
where it's available or how it's done um, since it's been included. If you reach out, we can always can put that information together for you. Oh, and Renee, thank you. Thank you for sharing those links there. Other than that last question from Amanda, do we have any other questions here about kind of the introduction that we went through here tonight? I'm not seeing any other questions come through here. Um, if we don't have any other questions, I did just want to say thank you so much again for taking the time to learn a little bit more about these resources. Um, and I really hope to see you all at our next session um, that will again go into a lot of detail on the Pressbooks public side of things, show some examples as to how that book, how that tool has been used by other authors, um, and make sure that you have all the information that you need to really dive on in and start creating some book files.